Hello everyone, this is Shannon from That So Po, and today I'm doing week 29 of my 2020 reads. This week I managed to finish two really great books. The first book that I finished this week was How to Be an Anti-Racist by Ibram X. Kendi. I buddy read this with Rachel at Kalinati, who I will link below, and it was such a great experience. We read it one chapter a day, and that was so great for sitting down and reflecting and thinking about this, especially because I did this as part of my social justice nonfiction project. I'll link a video to that below if you're not familiar. I really wanted to be able to analyze it and reflect and think, and it was such a great experience to to take our time with it. So thank you, Rachel. Um, this book is one that probably you've heard about because it's pretty popular right now. And I think it's popular for a good reason. It's a really nice introduction to the idea of anti-racism. So in this book, Kendi basically presents the idea of anti-racism as well as sort of interweaves a memoir of his own experiences growing up as a black man and sort of the internalized racism he had and how he had to work to learn how to be an anti-racist. So I love that he brings us along with him through that journey and kind of shows us all of the things we need to work through. So the basic premise is that anti-racism is rejecting the idea that any sort of group is inherently inferior, that somebody who is of a particular race deserves um, less equal treatment because of that. And so he posits that all of the inequities we see between races is due to just racist policy and that what we need to focus on is that policy. And he just kind of analyzes all of these different beliefs, all of these different intersections of uh, identity, all of these different ways that we kind of create a hierarchy of superiority and how that's basically something that buys into the idea of um, there being some people who deserve better and some people who deserve worse and says, let's just reject that everybody deserves equity and we need to fight for policies that give that. And I think it's a really powerful message. Um, I actually will have a video going up maybe later this week where I talk more in depth about it. So if you're interested in those ideas, go ahead and check that out. Uh, I think that this book really had a lot of strong ideas in it. Although I did find that, especially in the beginning, his memoir didn't kind of um, mesh as well with what was going on and I was a little confused and not as interested in it. By the end, it really worked, but in the beginning it was a little strange. Also, I felt like um, even though I did like the way he broke things down into chapters, sometimes I felt there was so much overlap and repetition, I could have just dealt with things being a little shorter. I think maybe I really like conciseness, but also readability in my uh, nonfiction. So I thought it was still very good and I gave it four and a half out of five stars. The other book that I finished this week was Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia, which was one of my most anticipated releases this year, so I was so glad to get to it. This is a gothic horror novel set in Mexico in the 1950s. We follow Noemi, whose cousin has married a very strange guy and gone to live up in a remote mining town in his mansion, uh, and she sends Noemi a very concerning letter, so Noemi decides to go and check on her only to find that, yeah, things are messed up in this mansion. So if you like gothic, if you like creepy, if you like atmospheric novels, this is for you. It does that really, really well. I also think that the horror component of this was a little bit more than I was expecting. It really does go into body horror. Um, I'm very squeamish, and so it was a bit much for me, although I think for normal horror readers, it's probably fine. Uh, so be aware of that. However, so much of this book worked for me so strongly that I was fine. I dealt with that gothic horror just fine because I loved the themes in this and I loved the atmosphere. Um, the mansion that she goes to is just what you would expect of a gothic novel. It's this kind of decaying Victorian mansion. There's creepy things everywhere. You're not really sure what's going on, but you know it's messed up. It just does this atmosphere of dread so well. Also, I love the themes in this. I mean, I expect high things of Moreno Garcia and she delivered. There are so many impressive layers of themes of talking about colonialism, about racism, about power, about sexism, about gaslighting, about so many things that I'm still trying to unpack all of those layers. And I love that this book was in conversation with so many other gothic things. I don't read a ton of gothic, but I have read enough that I can see 
a lot of how she's responding and calling back to many of these other novels. So if you've read My Cousin Rachel by Daphne du Maurier, or if you've read The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte uh, Perkins Gilman, it's very much in conversation with those. And so I was so enthralled with this that I immediately wanted to discuss it with people. Um, I'm really lucky because Cynthia at Book Whimsy, who I will link below, finished it right when I did. So we got to chat about it on Voxer and it was just so cool hearing how she analyzed it as well. And then I decided I needed to reread it. So I have actually started rereading it, this time out loud to my husband, Sush, since he loves horror and rarely do we get to experience horror things together because I'm such a wimp. Um, but once I reread this, probably in a couple of weeks, I am going to do a standalone review talking about it because it is amazing. In the meantime, uh, if you want to see a standalone review, I'm going to link below. Andrea at Book Ramble did one, and that's an own voices review. So I really recommend you check out her channel. She's also just really smart and funny. So I loved her analysis of this. It was really good. Um, yeah, so basically I adored this book. I gave it five out of five stars. I think everybody should pick it up. It's wonderful. Um, just be aware that it does have some body horror. So if that's something you're sensitive to, uh, know that it is there. I am sensitive to it too, but I thought that the book was very much worthwhile anyway. Okay, so that wraps up week 29 for me. If you have read either of these books, you have any comments, any thoughts, any recommendations, anything at all, go ahead and leave me a comment down below.